joining us today. I'm really excited for, for the webinar series here to learn more personally about uh, the cultural district in Japantown. So first up, we've got my friend Susie Kagami. She is the manager of the Japantown Cultural District. San Francisco Japantown is the oldest and largest of three remaining Japantowns in the nation. In the 1800s, San Francisco was the main entry point into America for, our, for the first groups of Japanese immigrants. After the devastation of the 1906 earthquake and fires, the Japanese community was segregated to the Western Edition, where we created a vibrant community of residents and business owners spanning over 40 blocks. Displacement, though, struck us and our community hard, first with the 1940s, um, with the unjust World War II incarceration and internment of Japanese Americans for over three years. And then again, in the 60s and 70s, the San Francisco Redevelopment Program bulldozed our neighborhood to create the Geary Street Corridor and the Japantown you see now, landmarked by the Peace Pagoda and a robust Japantown uh, tourist destination. Despite displacement, we are strong, resilient, and even having to rebuild twice, we have our fellow cultural communities to thank, especially our surrounding neighborhoods, such as the Western Edition, who safeguarded much of our assets while we are interned. But today, we are working hard to ensure the future sustainability of our Japanese and Japanese American community in San Francisco. The Japantown Cultural District was honored to be the first and one of eight existing cult San Francisco cultural districts today. Our Japantown Cultural District is still resilient. We have the highest density of seniors in San Francisco. We have over 60 arts and cultural education and nonprofit institutions serving youth, seniors, and the overall Bay Area communities. We have a community-based newspaper and online hub with a Japanese American and Pan-Asian focus catering to a worldwide audience. And we're home to over 10 legacy businesses and four historical historically recognized landmarks just within our five block radius. The Japantown Cultural District is excited to launch COHO. COHO is a co-creative hub and will be a J Japantown visitor center that honors the Japanese and Japanese American historical narrative to give voice to our immigrant ancestors, the strength and resilience of those who endured the internment experience, our displaced residents, and the narratives of who our generations are today, longing for connection to place, purpose, and pride. Next, we're gonna go to my friend. Um, she has a beautiful shop uh, in Japantown. I wanna introduce Linda Mihara. She is the owner of Paper Tree. I'm here to speak about the merchants and the different businesses that you'll find when you come to Japantown. I grew up here, this is, this is my home, and I've seen it change throughout the redevelopment phase, different businesses uh, closed, different businesses open. But uh, did you know that Japantown is home to 12 legacy businesses? And if you don't know what a legacy business is, it's a business that's been around at least 35 years. Uh, and it is um, kind of crowned special by the city of San Francisco to be um, kind of featured and preserved and hopefully nurtured to continue doing what they're doing. Uh, for Paper Tree, this is our 54th year in business, so we are one of those legacy businesses. And uh, yay, uh, the oldest business now um, is Soko Hardware. Soko Hardware at the corner of Buchanan and Post is going to be celebrating their 100th anniversary in 2025. So they are currently the, the oldest business in Japantown. And then we're we're just the young kid on the block compared to them. And we just recently had a another legacy business close that was Ben Kyodo, who was famous for their manju and mochi. And I know that you've probably seen them featured in a lot of, you know, um, uh, news uh, stories be, based on that. Uh, they've been around since uh, uh, for 115 years. So that was our our oldest business, but now it's Soko Hardware. So uh, the legacy businesses really afford, um, it. they kind of build and anchor Japantown. And we all have our different um, aspects of culture that we bring to Japantown. And uh, our store, Paper Tree, we feature uh, a wonderful selection of papers from Japan. We also are called the Origami Store because of our huge selection of origami paper and books. We just started opening up 
in-person classes. And I also um, support uh, the art of origami by having a free class that I offer on Zoom. I yes. hope you can join me. It's uh, 10 to 11 every Saturday morning. It's it's jewels like our store, Soko Hardware, that has amazing uh, Japanese tools for gardening and the seeds and all kinds of wonderful things. But really, I think Japantown is, is identified by all of the amazing restaurants that we have. So you definitely want to come to Japantown. You can get a wonderful sushi, you know, experience. Uh, you can also go to Hikari Sushi and do like the bullet train sushi, which is kind of cool. The, the sushi is de um, delivered to your table on a, on a bullet train. And that's very, very Japanese. So you can get a, an immediate culture um, sampling there. We have uh, two amazing grocery stores where you can get your Japanese goods. Uh, and if you're into ramen, everybody's into ramen now. We have an amazing selection of ramen restaurants. And in fact, right next door to me and on Buchanan and also inside the Japan Center, you will you won't have any problem. The, the only problem you'll have is trying to figure out where you're going to uh, eat. We so love, love, love for you to come to Japantown. I think you'll find an amazing experience. Your bellies will be full and happy, and uh, you'll really have a wonderful time. And uh, just even being out in the plaza or being where the cherry blossom trees are, where the Pagoda Peace Plaza is. And um, also come this weekend. It's the second weekend for Cherry Blossom Festival. So that's the time to come. Next, we move on to the Japantown Community Benefit District, and the executive director is Grace Horikiri. She's a true Wonder Woman in Japantown. Well, the Japantown Community Benefit District, of course, is a benefit district that uh, uh, really promotes and works on the economic and environmental enhancements uh, for Japantown. So for that means uh, we provide cleaning services through our community ambassadors. Uh, we keep our streets safe uh, through our safe city cameras and through the economic side, it's really helping to market Japantown and getting the word out about what's happening in our J-Town uh, neighborhood. Like Linda and you know a few others, um, I kind of grew up in J uh, Japantown, uh, went to grammar school, Japanese school, and of course hung out at JCYC and all the various stores that are here. Um, you know, the Community Benefit District really um, made strides, especially during COVID. Uh, you know, we were really out there helping to support our small businesses, get, um, helping them with uh, applying for grants. You know, uh, we started the Heart of J-Town Resiliency Fund, which, you know, we were able to raise over half a million dollars to support our small businesses. And it didn't end just there. You know, we are still continuing. And one of the works that we've been doing right now is also supporting our artists because many of our graphic designers, artists are also small businesses. And so we've been kind of um, gathering them together and they've uh, just uh, completed our second new set of street lamp banners that will go up uh, right after Cherry Blossom Festival. And then they've also worked on murals that uh, you can see at the Kinokuniya building on the first floor. So uh, things like, like Boz, you were saying music, food and art, you know, brings, uh, brings everyone together. And it's really true. Uh, another hat that I wear is the ED for the Nihomachi Street Fair, which takes place, you know, in the summertime. And we'll have a few events coming up for that. And you can learn more from our website. But, uh, you know, working with all these ladies here, as well as other community leaders in, our, uh, in Japantown, We've been able to, you know, really um, help promote our small businesses. Uh, they still, you know, they, it's a lot better than um, uh, last year, but uh, I think we still need to support them, um, uh, whether it's just going over there to make sure they're okay, making sure they still have masks available for folks that come into their store. Um, and uh, letting them know about any grants and um, funding that's available through the city or other places. So it's always about communicating to them, communicating to our community and communicating to the rest of the world about you know, what's the happenings in J-Town. Again, thank you, Grace. Uh, so finally, we have um, a legacy community leader in San Francisco, and we're so happy to have her in Japantown uh, please welcome to the stage Emily Murase. She is the 
executive uh, director of the Japantown Task Force. Uh, as the relative new kid on the block, Voss asked me to start with my background. Uh, so I'll share a little bit about that. Um, I, I was raised in the city and growing up spent every summer at the Japanese Community Youth Council. Worked there in high school at Lowell and through college. This is where I first met Grace, who was an early role model for me. As a JCYC kid, you knew every corner of Japantown like the back of your hand. In 2010, I became the first Japanese American to ever be elected to the 160 year old San Francisco Board of Education and served two terms, including as president, thanks to the support of many of you in the audience. Uh, giving our public school kids an opportunity to learn world languages, including Japanese was a big priority. And San Francisco offers Japanese language instructions from kindergarten to 12th grade in two elementary schools, one middle school and three high schools. And in January, I stepped into a new role as executive director of the Japantown Task Force, uh, literally returning to my roots. Uh, I'm doing my best to fill the very big shoes of Steve Nakajo, and I get to work with the inimitable Sandy Mori, board president, and Alice Kawahatsu, past president. I Our mission at the Japantown Task Force is to preserve and develop Japantown strengthen ethnic diversity, and create an atmosphere of beauty, vitality, and prosperity. Uh, you may know that before the war, there were about 80 Japanese communities across the country in such places as Denver, Seattle, Fresno. Uh, but today, as was mentioned before, there are just three remaining, all in California, Little Tokyo and LA, San Jose, Japantown, and San Francisco's J-Town. Uh, and without the movers and shakers on this panel, uh, J-Town would not be the vibrant place it is today. So I just wanna to touch on some of the major projects of the Japantown Task Force. Uh, one big one is the renovation of the Peace Plaza. And I see uh, Richard Hashimoto, co-chair of this committee in the audience. Um, some of you may not know that dozens of Japanese families and businesses were displaced during the redevelopment in the late 60s, early 70s to make way for the largely concrete Japanese Cultural and Trade Center and Peace Plaza, which were designed with very little, if any, community input. So there's quite a bit of unresolved trauma in this second displacement of Japanese American families from Japantown and to avoid repeating history, uh, the Japantown Task Force has made community input a central piece of the Peace Plaza renovation. Another project underway is the renovation of the Buchanan Mall, uh, where Linda's anchor Japantown business, Paper Tree, is located. Um, how many of you are familiar with the celebrated sculptor Ruth Asawa's origami fountains on the Buchanan Mall? Uh, I bet there's some of you, though, who have never seen water running in those fountains. Um, we are working on restoring this important water feature to its original glory. And the final initiative I want to mention is Japan Tenna, a project we piloted last November to showcase tourism and goods from one of the 47 different Japanese prefectures, Kagoshima, located in southern Japan. Over four weekends, we hosted nearly 6,000 visitors at a pop-up showcasing Kagoshima foods, goods, and attractions in an otherwise vacant storefront in the Japan Center Mall. Um, it was wildly successful. And before I conclude, I want to invite everyone uh, to the 55th annual Cherry Blossom Festival this weekend, where you'll find community-based entertainment, unique crafts and gifts. And thank you all for uh, joining us today.